All right. Another long term rental. And damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. So, rims all curved up. The correlation between renting a car long term and not paying for it and damage is, is <sighs> so. We got some damage on the trim. I can probably rent this out for a minute before I have to get that fixed. But yeah, here we go. So let's check the inside out. Aha! They disabled the kill switch. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. So, that's why the kill switch didn't work anymore. So, Mm-hmm. That's why the kill switch stopped working. All right. So. The corresponding between not paying and damaging cars is extremely high. Fortunately, there is no body damage. However, we do have a problem. And we got a very big problem. Because I had to pay $150 to get access to this car. And this is why I did not want them to know about the GPS kill switch. Because I turned this car off before and they disabled it. Now, the car will not start. I don't know what they did, so I got to take it back to Eurofed, get it towed, because they were some fucked up people. You saw what happened. This is why I did not want them to know I had the ability to turn the car off. These people, the, these folks were intentionally stealing. I turned the car off once and they paid up. This is going to institute a new policy. Once I turn the car off, I am not turning it back on. I'm going to go get my car because this has taught me a very valuable lesson. The first time I rolled up on them like Debo, the car wasn't damaged. And then I turned the car off and I even addressed this and said, you mess with my D GPS kill switch. And he said, no, I didn't. And they purposely kept my car knowing that they couldn't pay for it. Purposely. And they damaged it. And now it will not start because of the stuff they were doing. I'm quite sure George will be able to figure that out. But they had that car 23 days. <clears throat> so I had the GPS kill switch. I even had the GPS on it. And I actually went to try to get the car three times because my plan was if I can find the car, I was going to have it towed and just go ahead and have a locksmith open it up and have another key made. Every time I went for it, it was inside the garage. So they were intentionally keeping my car, intentionally not paying me for it, and she got arrested. 
I, and th this is what's funny. Um, she got arrested Sunday night. And while she was getting arrested, the husband called me and he asked, did you call the police? Now, what did I just tell you guys? They defeated the GPS kill switch. They were hiding the car. They were not paying me. And this joker was surprised that I called the police. And he's like, I'm trying to pay you $2,000 right now. And I'm like, fuck you. And hung up. You want to know why I took that tactic? Because I knew he was lying. See, this is when finessing goes wrong. He's been trying to finesse me. It's like, hey, I'll cash app you the money. But I'm at work right now. How long does it take to cash app? Pull out your phone, pay. 10 seconds, 15 seconds. They didn't have the money. They didn't have the money. But they were going to keep my car, depreciate my car, and prevent me from renting it to someone who would pay me, and he didn't think that I would call the police. He did not think that I would call the police while they were playing games. His wife got arrested and the child was in the car. So this is how it does if you get arrested. They take you and they call someone to get the child. If they can't find someone to get the child, they take the child to defax. I intentionally set it up where they would get arrested. I did not tell them I was calling the police. I sent them the man letter saying, bring my car back ASAP, which they ignored. And I said, my next step would be to the police. But they did not know that I had already called the police. Because, you know, in the beginning, when this stuff was happening, you know, people were making jokes and talking about the kill switches, the kill switches. This is proof positive that even when you have the GPS kill switch, people will still do this crap. They were intentionally stealing. This would have been a $25,000 month if it wasn't for two yard birds. You want to know how I know? Because that car would have rented out instantly. Remember the hood chick who wanted the BMW? That car rented out the next day. So they cost me, because I did $21,500, they cost me $3,500. Her two yard birds, actually three, three yard birds. Because what I'm getting ready to do, and I have a situation brewing right now. I got a guy in the Range Rover, and he's late. And I'm about to have a conversation with him because one of the things I'm learning is I'm going to start cutting these out, cars off at 12 hours and just going and getting them and not even caring about these people. Because once they start to be late, they're going to habitually be late. Many people have very bad financial habits and they like to pay their bills late and I'm getting ready like this month uh, I enter the 2nd of November with no long-term lates. I have five or six lates and they're a few hours. I got one girl. She's three days. I'm getting ready to have a conversation with her a very hard conversation with her because I'm like you need to bring my car back if you're going to be this late because I've been doing this six months and once they start to be late, if you don't say nothing, one day will creep into two days, two days will creep into three days. And the whole time they're driving your car, they're driving your car. They're depreciating and they're putting miles, they're wearing out the tires. You got to do oil changes and they're not paying you. So I got to got buy a new windshield for this BMW. If I had followed my first thought to take the car back the first time, my car wouldn't be damaged and they wouldn't have been able to defeat the GPS kill switch. But guys, if you're going to rent cars and you're going to have a GPS kill switch, you need to, once you turn that car off, you cannot turn it back on. You cannot turn it back on. Once it is off and you just go ahead, get your car. And here, here's something else that's happening. Because I was moving, I had a lot of stuff going on. I let some stuff slide and it cost me. I had a guy, he was late six days. I cut, turned the car off. And when they're late six days and they go out and they try to start the, to start the car, they know why the car isn't starting because they're late. 
This is another thing that is happening. People are keeping the keys. So going forward, I'm going to have a policy of cutting the car off at 12 hours and I got to get my little posse going where I can go get my car. Because these folks, I mean, this, this I, I am so pissed. I am so pissed. And this fool was still trying to finesse me in the ninth hour when the police had his wife and child in custody. He was still trying to finesse. He's like, I'm going to pay you. And I was just like, fuck you. And hung up on him because I knew he was lying. You know why I knew he was lying? If they had the money to pay me, why defeat the GPS kill switch? They were intentionally stealing. They were intentionally keeping my car away from me. They were intentionally hiding the car. And thank God it's not more messed up than it is. New windshield is going to be about $850 for that car. Now, when they were paying me, they paid me $3,000, right? This is another issue that is happening. People will pay me and then they will mess up the car. So I got to do, it cost me between getting the car impounded and getting the car towed to Eurofed, that was 400 bucks. And then to get this windshield uh, done, it's 850. So that's $1,200 out to 3,000. Same thing with the Porsche Cyan. Guy paid like 2,200, did about the tire, let's see. The tire was uh, 250. The window switch, I don't know how you break these window switch. He broke the window switch. So that was 500 bucks. So I actually still are ahead on that car. And let's talk about the, the guy I turned the car off and I just didn't have time to go get it. I actually had to have that car towed. And this morning, I gotta go get a locksmith to open it and then I have to have my key guy come and make some keys. Because once you turn the car off and they understand that you turned the car off, there is a 50 to 80% chance that you will not get that key back because they're going to get pissed. Now, I want you to think about this. They're not paying you. They're driving the car. They know you need the key. And like one dude, he tried to negotiate with me. It's like, if you pay me for this tire, I'm like, food, you ain't paid me. And this, this is another issue. People in tires, they feel that I should be responsible for them running some stuff over. So I'm getting ready to tighten up my policies. Like last month would have been the best month ever if it wasn't for these three yard birds, three yard birds. So this month we're going to go for a yard bird free. Like I got a guy in the Range Rover and he's late and I'm going to call him and it's like, look, if you don't make payment, and I'm gonna also start giving instructions, don't be late. Because many people think it's perfectly acceptable to be a few hours late. A few hours ain't no biggie, but the thing is, once we pass that 24 hour mark, we enter into the danger zone. And what I'm probably gonna start doing is cutting cars off at 12 hours and going to get them. Uh, I'm just gonna spend the money and make sure I have the second key for everything. The second key is critical. It is critical because you never know what car they're going to do this with. And the kill switch did not fail. And I bet when I check on the black 335D, I'm going to find the same thing. The kill switch did not fail. They got in there and they disabled the kill switch because they needed the car. They wanted the car and they couldn't pay for the car. These folks are criminal and I'm on the prosecutor because uh, I send them a message. I was like, you know, I need twenty two hundred dollars not to prosecute your wife. And then when I found out that they had disabled the kill switch, I said five thousand. And if they don't pay me five thousand, I am going to prosecute her. And if she goes to jail. She goes to jail. I don't give a damn because I am sick of these people. I am sick of them because, first of all, why are you renting a BMW when you live in a hotel? You live in a hotel. Why are you renting a BMW? I don't understand that. I, I don't, I, that I just, 
I, I don't understand that. But this is November. We're entering into November, December, and then we're entering into phase two. Phase two, I know this is going to sound crazy. I'm going to get even nicer cars for phase two. Phase two is going to start in January. January, I'm going to buy nicer cars. Now, why, why would I do that? I am beginning to see another sweet spot on hire car. The 70, I've got the Porsche rented out at 75 bucks a day. And I, I'm, I'm figuring out a market that I can target because they're going to be nicer cars. And one of the things I'm going to do is you can't rent this car unless you have three to five successful previous rentals from hire car. Because that's where I get burned. First time renters, that's where a lot of these issues start because like I got a 550. First time renter, the girl, she hit something. The car is rentable, it's drivable, but she hit something. And I'm just sitting there like, so I'm going to get like 2012 to 2016. They're going to be super nice. They're going to have the Bluetooth, but you will not be able to rent these cars if you don't have experience with hire car. Or if you have no experience, you're going to have to do a seven day rental. And if you don't need the car for seven days, oh, well, oh, well, uh, I'm not going to worry about it, but I've done the math. I can make 30 some thousand a month off 25 cars with high utilization. And currently all of the Camrys are wrecked. I have three wrecked Camrys right now. And I've got to wait to the city of Atlanta to get the police report so I can figure out whose insurance company I need to go after. So I got three wrecked Camrys. I got a wrecked BMW. So that's four cars. I'm going to get the Mercedes back. They say around the 11th. So that's four cars out of 31 that are wrecked. And then let's just say five because I got the Acura TL. I'm getting rid of that. I'm getting rid of the Acura TL. Um, the number of wrecks that I have in proportion to the number of cars I have is extremely high. I got five wrecked cars, cars that were in accidents out of 31. That's almost 20%, 20%. So yeah, but I'm just, and I'm also going to have to, um, Get a screener and I'm gonna put together a profile because if you live in the hotel, everyone that has lived in the hotel is turned out and it's gone bad. Every last one of them. So there's a certain personality, there's a certain um, situation that you have, but I'm getting ready to tighten it up. And like I said, you know, November, December. As much as I want to go out and buy more cars, I'm not, I'm not. I'm just like working on utilization, working on pushing it out, working on my policies. Like I'm going to call this guy in the Range Rover because uh, he's about 16 hours late. And I'm like, look, you need to make payment and you cannot ever be late again. And that's what I'm going to start telling them. Do not be late. Do not think it's perfectly acceptable to be a day late because that's where the problem, and I got one dude, he's in the at BMW X5 and he's late every day. And I was like, look, dude, you got to tighten it up because I'm tired of looking at my dashboard and seeing these lates because I can go from like, I got these two cars back. I got the two BMWs, two BMWs. And I was like four lates and it's exploded to six because people are not on top of their money. So I'm going to hit them up. I'm going to give them a phone call. And if I have to get all my cars back, I'll give them all back because I know I can rent them out just like that. Because the thing is, one of the things you got to do with rental management is maintain and be on top of your assets. Because the 740, I installed the guild, you know, and there were all these people making all this fun. It's like, you need those kill switches. I had a kill switch and it still happened. And that's what I was telling you. And this is why a lot of the major car rental companies don't have kill switches on their cars because they're easy to defeat. They, they just pulled it out and stuck some wire in it. That's all they did. So um, once again, we're going back with the original policy of, oh, it doesn't work. Do this. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. Leave the key in the car and I would have it towed. 
That's the policy we're going back to. Because if they know that I have the ability to turn the car off, this will happen again. This will happen again. And I'm just sitting there like, I'm so glad his wife got arrested. I am so glad because she had to spend some time. And he had to bail her out. He had to bail her out and had to do with the kids. And that was that little, that little bit of inconvenience and uncomfortableness. And she had to get a mug shot and all this other stuff. And, you know, I'm going to call them because if they don't pay me this $5,000, i am prosecuting. And if she goes to jail for a year or two, she goes to jail. I don't care. Because they intentionally stole from me. They could not pay for this car. Like I said, once again, you live in a hotel. Why are you renting a BMW? That makes no sense. But once again, I'm seeing a lot of stuff. I got a lot of people in the hotels. I had a girl who rented the Acura. She lived in the hotel. Turned the car off on her at the gas station. Because one of the things that I am seeing, and I had a long-term renter that was in the Camry who was never late, and, that, and this is hire car's policy. If you're in the accident, hire car locks up your account. You can't rent cars from there anymore. So I have, who, and the accident wasn't his fault. So I lose a good long-term renter, yet I persist with these yard birds. Because the dude, you know, he was like, he, he just went ghost once I turned the car off. Because he was like, you turn the car off, I'm like, this is another thing. You turn the car off. I can go get some money and load it on my car. And I said, why don't you have a friend take you to get money to load it on your car? And once the money's loaded on the car and you pay for it, I'll turn it back on. I ain't hear from it. That let me know that he didn't have the money. See, I'm learning. I am, lear I am learning. Once that car goes off, it doesn't come back on. It doesn't. Because this is, this is what will happen. Because they figured out that I could turn the car off. And Duke was shocked that his wife got arrested. He was like, did you call the police? You are got my car. You're hiding my car. You're playing games. And you will not give me my $20,000 asset back because you need it and you want to screw me. Because one of the things that I'm finding out is like uh, when I rented that car to them, I showed up in the Porsche. And this, this happens, you know, this, this happens that when people see that I'm doing well, they feel that they can take advantage. They feel like, oh, if I don't pay him, he'll be good. And you know, that's true because I have other businesses, but that ain't the point. If I am providing you a service, you should pay. We shouldn't have to go through these little games. But once again, I'm learning, I'm learning like this month, except for these three yard birds. And once again, I don't think that I'm going to, once I get the 335 back, I'm going to have the GPS kill switch checked out because I think that she disabled it. And that, that's one of the things. And that, that, that was a mistake. Once I turn the car off, you cannot turn them back on. You cannot turn them back on. Because once they understand that you have the ability to turn that car off, they're going to start looking for whatever way. They're going to go to Google, figure out what they need to do to disable it, and they're going to keep your car and they're going to play games with you. They're going to play games. Because I'm just sitting here like, so the kill switches didn't fail. They were disabled because I had crooks and criminals renting my cars. And I, I, I got to write this letter. I got to work on that today. I got so much stuff to do, y'all. I'm thinking about like just taking the month off from YouTube and then working on my businesses. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but that's what I'm thinking because there's so many things I want to do that I need time to do, but we will see. And I may just crank it down to one video a week per channel and just work on this other stuff because I got a lot of stuff to do a lot of stuff to do and one of the things is i gotta order some more gps kill switches they work when the people are not defeating them they work they work fine i've turned off eight cars and you know besides it's the three that they disabled 
No, two. Two, they disabled the switch because I'm like, I'm almost positive that when I get into it, I'm going to find out that she disabled the switch because that is a sign that you're dealing with an unethical person. They know they don't have the money and they're going to prevent you from stopping them from driving the car because that chick put 14,000 miles on that car in one month. And I saw the comments and I agree with you guys. I think they were running the shift. I think there was two or three people driving that car. And once again, with Hire Car's policy of not locking their account, like uh, I'm writing a letter to Hire Car. I was like, y- y'all owe me for that month because she should have never been able to, to rent a car. Because I've been doing this six months and I already know that once they get late, they never catch up. They never catch up. And y'all been doing this seven years. So you should have metrics on that. She should have never been able to rent that car. And I never would have had this situation. So I'm riding them and I'm going to hit them with my demands. Because in this, and this is something else too with higher car protection policies, the, they messed up the GPS kill switch, they broke the windshield. The windshield isn't even in the thing um, for you know your claims. And so I'm been putting in claims and they're like, well, we don't under this. And I, and also I'm going to address this in the letter of hire car. Keys should be covered under all protection plans. You want to know why? If you have a GPS kill switch and they understand that you turn the car off, there's an 80% chance that they're going to keep the key. That should be covered by hire car because I'm already seeing what I'm dealing with. And they should, they, they, they know, they know what they're dealing with. So, you know, this is November. We're starting November off pretty strong. I currently have the 550 Range Rover, Range Rover, and the 335i. That's all I got left. Well, I got those four cars. Then I have the 330 the 535i and the Mini. So I've got six cars that are not rented and I have five cars that are wrecked. That's 11, 12. So 12 cars out of 31 are not rented. So I'm, I got 19 cars rented. Now, once I go ahead and get these cars back, cause that, that's another big issue, keeping these cars on the road. And this is why in the second wave, I'm buying newer cars. Um, I'm, you know, 2012 is lowest I'm going to go. I'm not, because once again, these older cars keep breaking and that's one big issue. And what I may do is just sell off a lot of these older cars and replace them with newer cars starting in 2020. Because uh, like I said, I need time to absorb all this other stuff because uh, I feel this month is going to be a good month and I'm going to get that corporate credit card paid off. And then December, that money is going to start sitting in the corporate account for January purchases. Because like I said, I got a lot of stuff to do, a lot of things to work on. Um, So just bear with me. But yeah, I'm pissed. I am pissed. If I had these folks before me, I would choke the shit out of them. Because they got in there and they messed up the car where it will not start. When you press the button, it's just like, hmm. Because they did something. And I don't know how much that's going to cost for me to get fixed. And this is one of the things. They paid me $3,000, but all the money that they paid me is going to go back to getting the car rentable. And part of that is my fault. Once again, never, once you turn that car off, never, ever, ever turn it back on. Never turn it back on. Because once they get to understand that you can turn it off, they're going to start looking for how the ways to defeat it. And this is what you're dealing with. You're dealing with a criminal population because that was criminal. You knew you couldn't pay me, but you prevented me from getting my car back. You actively worked against me to keep me from my property while you were not paying me. I mean, and you know, this is, this is black folks. Now, the 335D that got defeated, once again, I, I'm almost positive that she unhooked, you know, she's white. So 
The thing is, it's an economically fragile demographic, and I know what I'm dealing with now. I have a firm grasp, and fortunately, I've learned some stuff because in the future, if this happens again, I'm going to start sending me these demand letters when they're like a day late. And if I, you know, start sending it early, 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 because uh, I called the police Friday, I got my car back Monday. They arrested her Sunday night. I called the police Friday, because see, once it enters into the hot wire as a stolen car, everyone's looking for it. And they will find it, because I knew they were driving it, because I, I could still do, you know, the GPS still works, so I could see they were driving all over Georgia. But, and dude, dude just kept trying to finesse me. It's like, I'm at work, I'm gonna cash app you the money. I'm like, really? Why do you, what? All you gotta do is take your phone out, 15 seconds to do cash app. He didn't have the money. And they didn't wanna let the car go. And this, this is another thing. This is why in the second wave, I'm gonna be really, really picky. Because, you, you know, if you're like, someone who wants to rent a car because your car is in the shop. Typically my experience with those renters have been very good. I'll do that. But if you just like want to rent for two days, get in a fancy car and then hope to make money, you're not getting my car. That's where I get burned because there's a group of people out there who will not drive for Uber, Lyft or Dash. They're on the platform, but they really don't drive and they will rent the car for two days and instantly be late. Instantly. Those are problems. So second wave, we're going to have a tighter presentation. We're going to have uh, a much better policy. But yeah, they actually defeated the GPS kill switch, kept my car intentionally, kept driving it, damaged it. And I'm just sitting there like the, the correlation between the lack of payment and damage is so I mean, I don't know from a perspective, like I have a BMW, I have a Porsche, I have a Mercedes. There's not a scratch or mark on my cars, but I care about my cars. I feel that there's something, a devil may care attitude develops when these people, like I got the car, I'm not paying for it. I don't really care about it because it happened with the BMW X5 when I got it back. The Range Rover, it wasn't damaged. And the Land Rover I got back, she didn't, you know, she didn't have it weeks and weeks without paying for it. She had it, actually, she didn't even have it. The car was impounded for a week and it came back perfect. It was fine. It, it came back in the same condition that it was rented out. So I'm, I'm just seeing this correlation because there are people out there who are just messed up. They're just messed up. They will steal from you. And I'm going to safeguard like this month. Um, I'm going to see what I can push out because like I said, I currently have 19 cars out. I have five people who are hours late and we're going to start, I'm going to start messaging, bugging the shit out of them. It's like, Hey, you need to pay or you need to bring the car back. Bugging the shit out of them because I've just seen this happen so many times. I've only been doing this six months that once they get late and I'm like, and the Range Rover dude, if I call him and I can't reach him, I'm just going to turn it off and go get it. I got a second key for that car. I'm just going to turn it off and go get it and rent it out to someone else. And because uh, I remember this one chick, I turned the car off and she was like two days late. And she was like, you act like I was a week late. I'm like, I ain't even arguing with her. She's habitually used to paying her bills late. And there's a lot of people like that. And I don't want those people renting my cars. I don't want to deal with them because it's a pain in the ass to wake up and see all these late payments. Like one morning I woke up, I had like 15 cars late, 15. And I started messaging and in about three hours, I was down to about eight. Oh my bad. Oh my bad. You're renting a car, pay for it. All right. So that's all I got for you guys. I am beyond annoyed because, um, and the car is dirty, a uh, car seat and other stuff in there. I got, I'm just throwing it away. I'm not trying to, Hey, here you, the car seat is going in the trash. Everything in that car is going in the trash. I'm not trying to give you nothing back. So 
yeah, it is um, really interesting. But that month, like, like I said, that month could have been a $25,000 month if it wasn't for these people. And f the good thing is I could take that as a net loss, as an actual net loss off my taxes. So I'm looking at getting a $100,000 refund back. So that's one saving grace of this business. Because when I get that $100,000 $100, refund back, I've invested $400,000. That's going to pull me back down to $300,000. So we will see. We will see. But that's all I got for you guys. I will see you guys in the next one.